All right. Good evening, everyone. Joe Carollo. Welcome back to Carollo's Corner at it's all about scores.com. Uh, episode five of the Mike Wilson show. Mike, uh, great to have you back on the show. I know uh, not feeling too hot tonight, considering uh, last Friday night's game against Woodstown. Your big rival it was a heavily hyped game. Uh, let's get into that first. Oh, absolutely. I mean, hey, it was a great game. Woodstown played very well. Um, our kids played hard. We just made a couple early mess, uh, special team mistakes, fired a, fired a couple uh, snaps over our punter's head. They got a safety, a couple short fields, and then it just became a game where we just ran out of time. Yeah, I'd seen the film. I was you know, highly impressed by them. I did see you guys made some good plays, good stops on defense, and your offense struggled a bit. Uh, so you had some trouble moving the ball. But your, your defense did make some nice plays. I was impressed with them. I don't think they skipped much of a beat. I do believe they have a new coach, uh, a lot of turnover and graduation, but they really, you know, they they looked pretty good, and I think they're going to be, you know, group one contender for sure. Moving on, uh, this week we have the Pensgrove Red Devils coming in Friday night. What could you tell us about this year's Pensgrove team? Um, very athletic um, and stuff like that. Watching them on film and stuff like that. They got playmakers everywhere. It's going to be come down to a game is can we limit their big plays and can we fix our mistakes? So I believe to, we, we can fix our mistakes and we play discipline, mistake free football. We'll be in a we're, we'll, we'll be in a good spot. Remember the matchup. Like, how's the matchup against them? I always ask you this every week, the chess match. Like, what do you have to do, <clears throat> excuse me, to beat them? Or what do they have to do to beat you? Besides yeah, these mistakes. I, mean, I, that you I think defensively, we need to stop the run. We've been against, we've been good against the run all year. Even last week, Belafonte is a great runner. We held him to under 100 yards rushing. Like, so all our right. rush defense has been pretty good all year. Um no big plays in a passing game. And then I think us, oh, so we just got to move the football and convert third downs. And we do that. I think we'll be okay. All right. Cause um, for those of you out there, not from, not familiar with Pensgrove, they had uh, become a dominant program late last decade. Uh, I believe they won state championships in 12, 18 and 19. They kind of fell off a little bit. And I know they're young, but it looks like they're on their way back. And uh, you know, this could, this could be potentially a really good game. What do you guys, I mean, coach wise, what's the word, you know, in the inner circle, because I know you, you had two losses and uh, mistakes were a, a big part of them. Like, what are you guys doing differently? Anything you guys are going to do different there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know me well enough, Joe. I mean, we we reevaluate everything in a win or a loss. Um, sometimes you got to make tough decisions. Um, I think we made some adjustments on the coaching staff. We're practicing a little bit different. We're emphasizing our mistakes. We know what we got to clean up. The kids know what they got to clean up. We have an experience group. I think what it comes down to is. The kids have to learn how to win those tough games where a mistake is magnified, and they right. have to do that in the past. And I think they're learning that, even though they're a senior group with a lot of experience, they're learning how to play those games because one mistake is magnified when you play this level of competition. Yeah, and I've I've, I've noticed that. What a, what could you tell us with Pensgrove? Their last couple, uh, I believe their what is their record? One and one. I believe they beat Deptford and lost to Glassboro. Um, again, I mean, when you look at them, I mean, their big play capability everywhere. They can score on one play. Um, so, I mean, I think what it comes down to is just stopping their big play capability. Were they doing these, getting these big plays in the two previous games that you saw? I just saw their, you know, I just saw the recap. I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, I saw who won and who lost. I didn't really get any. I mean, in the Deptford game, they had big plays on offense. They moved the ball. They threw the ball well. Um, okay. they ran the ball well against Glassboro. They had a couple of big play opportunities. They didn't convert. I mean, that game was close. I mean, they convert two or three two or three different plays, that game's a lot closer than that scoreboard says. Really? They played, so get, they played last board pretty tough. So you guys are going to be in for a battle uh, Friday night, but I don't think it's a surprise to you. You know the division you guys were put in. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, you know, it's to be expected. Uh, anywhere else, uh, let's, go, let's go Let's travel a little bit around South South Jersey, the other parts of South Jersey. Any, surpri any other surprises or uh, opinions on the games last weekend? Honestly, I mean, we've just been stuck in my own thing. I mean, I mean, watching scores and stuff. It's early in the season. So, I mean, we'll just see where everything plays out. Right. Well, I'll share some thoughts with you. Yeah. I saw Camden Friday night. Unbelievable. Uh, they're group two. My pick to win group two, maybe the entire state. Uh, I was impressed with them at a 44-3 victory over Shawnee. They were excellent on all yeah. aspects of the game. Very disciplined. Not You know, I think two penalties all night. But between the passing, the running, the the, the tackling, the, the speed to be able to catch, you know, kids running away downfield is highly impressed with them. Uh, they're going to be a problem for anybody. 
My biggest surprise, again, is your neighbors, Bridgeton, 3-0. and Yeah, I mean, Coach Williams is doing a fantastic job over there. And um, I think, again, the West Jersey League allows for some schedule relief, allows teams to rebuild. I mean, we were party of that. So I think the league does a great job with that. Yeah, I know we talked about you lose a line release and stuff like that. But the, the league definitely allows teams to do it. And he's doing a great job over there. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy for him. And they have a legit chance of going forward. No, they play – you know, a winnable game against Defford this week. Uh, you know, we saw Millville do away with Mainland. The game was close from what I was told. Uh, it was 7-6 Mainland, and Mainland fumbled the ball, and uh, none other than Latsir Brooks ran it in for a touchdown. Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, that game was probably closer to what the score indicated, and Millville just pulled away. That's what I heard. And from what I heard, yeah, it turned, turned the game around. And, and like you said, uh, sometimes a mistake you make amplifies, and it's those plays that – because who knows what could have happened. We know how well Coach Mainland is. They get a lead. They're hard to, to beat. Uh, I understand they were driving. They could have scored on that, and it could have been a totally different game. Absolutely. I mean, again, in a big game against good teams, good quality, you know this from watching football all these years, mistakes are just magnified. You just can't do those things. Yeah. And, again, that's a big what if. We don't know. I mean, you know, if we talked in what ifs, the whole history of the world would be changed. But you can't. It's We're humans. It's human Absolutely. nature. Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to think of any. Let me. Uh, I know you're just focusing on the game at hand in Group One specifically. <coughs> Excuse me. Any but anything else catching your attention? No, I mean outside. I mean, Class Four is very good again this year. They're probably better than they were last year, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, outside of that, I mean, just seeing the teams that maybe some film that we cross reference and stuff like that. It's just focus on Penn's Grove Friday night. Right. Looking ahead, you got Paulsboro in two weeks. We'll get to that in two weeks. I know you got Salem next yes. week. Uh, Paulsboro is not to be ignored. They are two, they're two and one and they lost an overtime 29, 28 to Camden Catholic last week. Uh, I do think they've turned the corner. I think last year was a fluke with the one and nine season. Uh, I think they're going to be there in the end, very close to the end. Yeah, anyway. They're a story traditional program. So it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I think they're on their way back. Coach Harvey's doing a great job. Um, looking uh, up to group five. I mean, you know, Cherokee took a hit last week to a very, very good St. Augustine team, and Tom's River North, you know, still is the leader of the pack. Um, anything else, Mike, before we uh, take off for the night? No, absolutely not. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate talking to you every week. Not a problem at all. It's a short episode tonight. Well, guys, we'll be back here in one week to talk about another one of your neighbors, the Salem Rams, and another great uh, matchup of tradition of Sa Salem County rivalries. Absolutely, Joe. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Not a it. problem, Mike. It's Joe Carrillo signing off at Carrillo's Corner. It's all about scores.com. We'll see you guys next week.